Hello and welcome back Discovery Learners to another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It is I, Teacher Liz here, your host once more on today, Thursday. On this episode, we're going to go over some observances, interesting history, I'll be showing you some cool landmarks, animals, pretty plants, and of course some interesting facts. So let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Hey Discovery Learners, it's Substitute Teacher Andrew again with a bunch of new observances for May 6th. Our first observance is National Nurses Day. This day is annually observed on May 6th, and that's today. On this day, we raise awareness of all nurses' contributions and commitments and acknowledge the vital role nurses play in society. This day is also the first day of National Nurses Week and is sometimes known as National RN Recognition Day. National Nurses Week begins on May 6th and ends on May 12th, which is the birthday of Florence Nightingale. She was born May 12, 1820. Florence Nightingale was a celebrated English social reformer and the founder of modern nursing. She became well known while taking care of an injured soldier from the Crimean War. Nightingale was dubbed the Lady with the Lamp because of her habit of making rounds at night. That's super interesting, but I bet you're wondering how you can observe National Nurses Day. Well that's easy, just be appreciative and give recognition to all the nurses out there. Or maybe you have a nurse in your family. Let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance is National Beverage Day. National Beverage Day encourages us to sit back, relax, and enjoy our favorite beverage. Beverages come in many forms, and whether you prefer a hot beverage or a cold one, the choice is yours. Serve it up caffeinated, pour it over ice, make it carbonated, or mix it up as a cocktail or a mocktail, if the case may be. Beverages may be freshly squeezed, frozen, blended, or creamy. They can even be sweet, sour, bitter, smooth, and believe it or not, dry. We drink them to cool off or to warm up. We also drink them to chill out and serve them up to add a sparkle to a celebration. And it's National Beverage Day, which means why not try something new, spice things up. Maybe add a scoop of vanilla ice cream to your root beer and have a root beer float. It's a drink to you on National Beverage Day. Let us know in the comment section below what drink you'll be serving up today. Our last observance is National Crepe Suzette Day. May 6th honors a unique and delicious dessert known as Crepe Suzettes. While there are slightly different versions of Crepe Suzettes, the dish is quite distinct from most other crepes. The recipe first appeared in the 19th century in Paris, courtesy of Chef Henry. According to the chef's memoir, he accidentally ruined the sauce for his crepes while serving them for Prince Edward of Wales. With no time to recover, he tasted the burnt sauce and discovered the flavors blended deliciously. While he served the dish, Henry named the crepes princesses. However, the prince greatly protested it, and so the chef changed the name to Suzette in honor of the female guests at the table. Chef Henry would later come to the United States and serve as John D. Rockefeller's chef. He would have many French desserts that would be world renowned, but none more so than the crepe Suzette. To make the sauce, he caramelized sugar and butter, orange juice zest, orange liqueur. Once set a fire, the alcohol evaporates quickly, resulting in a thick caramelized sauce. Restaurants now often prepare the crepe Suzettes at the table for guests. So it's kind of like dinner and a show. I know there's a crepe restaurant not too far from the Discovery Day program. Let us know in the comment section below if you've ever had a crepe Suzette, or perhaps if you've ever had a crepe at all. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today in 1889, the World's Fair in Paris opens with the recently completed Eiffel Tower, serving as its main entrance arc. The Exposition Universelle of 1889 or the 1889 World's Fair was held in Paris from May 6th to the 31st of October 
1889. It was the fourth of eight expositions held in the city between 1855 and 1937. It attracted more than 32 million visitors. The most famous structure created in the exposition, and is still remaining, is the Eiffel Tower. Today, in 2004, the TV sitcom Friends airs its finale in the 10th and final season in the USA, reaching about 52.5 million viewers. The last one, also known as the one where they say goodbye, is a series finale of the television sitcom Friends. The episode served as a 17th and 18th episode of season 10. The episode's two parts were classified as two separate episodes, as it was written by series creators David Crane and Martha Kaufman, and directed by executive producer Kevin S. Bright. The series finale first aired on NBC in the United States on May 6, 2004, when it was reached 52.5 million viewers making it the most watched entertainment telecast in six years and the fifth most watched overall television series finale in the U.S. history as well as the most watched episode of any television series throughout the decade of the 2000s. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first noble figure born today is Willie Mays, born May 6, 1931, in Alabama. This American Hall of Fame outfielder and 24-time All-Star, also known as the Say Hey Kid. He hit 660 home runs in New York and San Francisco Giants and the New York Mets and was a two-time National League MVP as well as a World Series champion with the Giants in 1954. Before he was famous, he entered the majors as a special prospect, and there was a race between the Dodgers, Giants, and Braves to sign him. While his career at the plate was nothing short of spectacular, he was also a spectacle on the outfield winning 12 Golden Gloves making him one of the most talked about and celebrated catches in the MLB history during the 1954 World Series. He turns 90 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Willie Mays! Our next notable figure born today is Bob Seeker. Born May 6, 1945 in Lincoln Park, Missouri. This American rock and roll singer songwriter is known for his raspy voice and blue collar singing lyrics. He rose to fame in the 1970s, achieving success both as a solo artist and as a frontman for the Silver Bullet Band. His many popular songs include Turn the Page, Night Moves, Old Time Rock and Roll, and Against the Wind. Before he was famous, he was a track and field athlete during high school. He stated that Little Richard was the artist who inspired him to become a musician. He also co-wrote the Eagle song Heartache Tonight from their 1979 hit album The Long Run. The song reached number one on Billboard Hot 100 and the single sold over a million copies. He turned 76 years old today. Happy birthday Bob Seger. Another noble figure born today is Tom Bergeron, born May 6, 1955, in Haverhill, Hill, Massachusetts. This American TV host of Hollywood Squares, America's Funniest Home Videos, and on occasion, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Before he was famous, he once worked as a local radio DJ in his hometown. He later became a host for the popular series, Dancing with the Stars. He turns 66 years old today. Happy birthday, Tom Bergeron. And our last notable figure born today is George Clooney. Born May 6, 1961 in Lexington, Kentucky. This American actor, director, writer, and producer became the first person to be nominated for an Academy Award in six different categories, 
winning his first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role in 2005 film, Syriana. He portrayed Dr. Doug Ross on the medical drama ER series from 1994 to 1999 and starred as the title character in Ocean's Eleven Trilogy. In 2019, he began starring on Hulu's Catch-22. Before he was famous, in middle school, he became afflicted with Bell's palsy, which partially paralyzed his face. In his late teens, he tried out for MLB Cincinnati Reds, but didn't make it past the first round of cuts. He is considered to be one of Hollywood's biggest movie stars. His long list of film credits include Batman in the 1997 film, Batman and Robin, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, The Perfect Storm, The Descendants, Michael Clayton, Up in the Air, and Tomorrowland. Wow, that's just to name a few. He turns 60 years old today. Happy birthday, George Clooney. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along, Discovery Learners, and we will see the landmarks of the world. Hey, Discovery Learners. As we continue our journey of discovery throughout Mexico, here are some landmarks you should see. Starting with Chichen Itza. Located in the Yucatan Peninsula region, I'm pretty sure everyone has seen or heard of this famous landmark. Located not too far from Cancun, it's one of the most visited ancient ruins on all of Mexico. After having been on the UNESCO World Heritage List since 2007, the glorious Chichen Itza site was named one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. Archaeologists believe that the Chichen Itza was the high power city in 600 AD, during which time they built the four clusters of this pyramid. Wow, pretty cool. This is like the... This is actually one of the most picturesque ancient temple that everyone have seen. Next on our list is Talum, also located in the Yucatan Peninsula region. On the Caribbean coast of Mexico, the town of Talum offers seaside Mayan ruins, sandy beaches, and many undersea caverns and sea notes. The Talum ancient ruin site is the third most visited ancient ruin site in Mexico. This mystical place is situated along the Riviera Maya and was originally built as a fortress. The mines knew the need of protection and chose to build an overwhelming fortress to keep an eye on possible invaders. Wow, this complex looks big. I wonder how long it took to build. Next up, we have Mitla, located in the state of Oaxaca. This was the most important religious center for the ancient Zopotec culture, known as Mitla. It is a fascinating ancient ruin that was built and evolved from 900 BC to 1521 AD. It is a famous for elaborate mosaic framework that adorns the facades of the buildings and tombs. Wow, pretty neat. Our next stop is the Cathedral de Metropolitana de la Asuncion. This is located in Mexico City. This Mexico City Cathedral is one of the most recognized and most famous landmarks in Mexico. This cathedral stands at 220 feet high and has one large dome. Construction of this cathedral began in 1573 AD and was completed with a Gothic Baroque, Neoclassical, and Plasterique styles in 1813. Four beautiful statues of St. Peter, Paul the Apostle, St. Andrew, and James are engraved in the main facade of this cathedral. There are 16 chapels within the cathedral, each dedicated to different saints such as St. Isidore, St. Peter, and the Immaculate Conception. Wow, yet another landmark I've definitely seen before in pictures. If I ever go to Mexico City, I definitely want to take on my own picture of this cathedral. Next up is the Cave of Crystals. In Nayaka, located in the Mexican state of Chihuahua, this cave has giant selenite crystals up to 40 feet long, many weighing as much as 55 tons. It is also known as the Giant Crystal Cave. It is connected to the Nayaka Mine 
and is approximately 984 feet deep. It contains some of the largest crystals ever found in the world. Temperatures in the cave is extremely hot, climbing up to temperatures up to 200 degrees. These temperatures help the crystals to form. Wow, these caves are amazing. It kind of reminds me of the Fortress of Solitude. You know, Superman's house. And our last stop on our list is Sotano de las Golondrinas. Located in the state of San Luis Potosi and is also known as the Cave of Swallows. This cave is the largest cave shaft in the world, measuring more than 1,200 feet deep. Many of the birds within the cave have to fly ascending in circles around the cave until they can actually reach the top. Whoa, that's a really deep cave. 1,200 feet? And this cave is occupied by birds. Pretty cool. Now, Mexico is a very old country with lots to see. And unfortunately, we do not have time to show it all. But what we did get to see was pretty cool. Now be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's episode as we recap all we learned about Mexico here on Ability to Learn. Here's the animal of the day. Today's animal is the mosquito. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous insects in the world. There are over 3,000 species of mosquito that can be found all over the world too. Mosquitoes inhabit all kinds of habitats that provide enough moisture and food. Fossil evidence even indicates that they existed on the planet at least 79 million years ago. Besides humans, many animal species are the target of these blood-sucking mosquitoes. These animals transmit numerous dangerous diseases that kill millions of people each year. Every 45 seconds, one child in Africa dies due to malaria. People use chemical repellents and drainage of wet habitats in the fight against mosquitoes. Unfortunately, mosquitoes are still numerous and widely spread in the wild. The mosquito is a miniature insect that can reach up to 3 quarters of an inch in length and only weigh 0 0.000088 ounces of weight. The body of the mosquito is divided into three segments, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The mosquito has a pair of antennae on its head. They detect odors which facilitate the identification of their prey, and sites that are suitable for breeding. Mosquitoes have large compound eyes that are composed of a huge number of individual lenses. The mosquitoes also have six legs and one pair of wings. They move their wings 450 to 600 times in just one second which creates the typical buzzing sound that you hear when mosquitoes are flying around your head. Mosquitoes fly at the speed of only 1 to 1.5 miles per hour. They can travel up to 7.5 miles per night. Mosquitoes are crepuscular animals, which means they're only active during dusk and dawn. Mosquitoes transmit numerous diseases such as malaria, dengue and yellow fever, encephalitis, elephantitis, and West Nile virus. Mosquitoes detect their victims by their body odor, their temperature, and exhaled carbon dioxide at a distance of up to 70 feet. Scientists discovered that certain types of foods such as mint, fruit, and caramelized chocolate may alter a mosquito's sensitivity to carbon dioxide and potentially save the victim from a mosquito's bite. People that like to drink beer are also especially attractive to mosquitoes. Only female mosquitoes suck blood. They require proteins from the blood for the development of eggs. Male mosquitoes feed on pollen or nectar. The biting apparatus of a female mosquito consists of two tubes. One tube releases an enzyme which prevents the clotting of the blood during their meal. The other tube is used for the sucking of the blood. A red, itchy bump is left on the skin that can be seen after mosquito bite. It represents the allergic reaction of the saliva of the mosquito. The mosquito undergoes four developmental stages in their life. Eggs, larvae, pupa, and the adult insect. The development depends on the environment and conditions and the temperature. It may last from five up to 40 days. The first three developmental stages take place in the water. Because of that, people try to eradicate mosquitoes by destroying their wet habitats. The lifespan of the mosquito depends on the species. It may last from several weeks up to a few months. Those critters buzz around for a little longer than my liking. Let us know in the comment section below if you've ever had to deal with insects like the mosquito. 
And here I thought mosquitoes were only good for getting dino DNA. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the avocado. The avocado is a flowering plant. This plant originates from Mexico, but it can be found around the world today. Avocados grow in tropical and subtropical areas that provide enough sunlight and humidity. It doesn't tolerate low temperatures and strong winds. Avocados are prone to different kinds of bacterial, viral, and fungal disease that may introduce rotting to certain parts of the plant or lead to the death of the entire tree. The avocado is an integral part of the human diet for thousands of years. There are over 400 different varieties of avocado, but only a few of them are used commercially. Due to the intense flavor and high nutritional value, popularity of avocados have grown consistently. Avocado trees can reach up to 66 feet high. The avocado has elliptic, 4 to 10 inch long green leaves. They're alternately arranged on the tree. Avocados have green or yellow flowers that easily blend with the rest of the tree. Avocado trees produce oval or egg-shaped fruit that have a fleshy structure and a large seed in the middle. Avocados, known as alligator pears because of the pear-like shape and the rough texture of the skin. Avocados are also a rich source of fats, vitamin C, and vitamins of the B groups, minerals, especially potassium, and fiber. It is a healthy fruit and is recommended to everybody. Unfortunately, some people develop allergies after consumption of avocado gets to excess. Avocados are often consumed raw because cooking them changes the taste. It's often served in the form of shakes, ice creams, or dips. Besides for eating fresh and ripe avocados, they can be used to soothe sunburns or improve the tones of skin. Almost 50% of Americans consume avocados regularly. California produces 95% of all commercially available avocados in the United States. Mexico is the greatest producer of avocados that are available worldwide. It exports them more than 1 million tons of avocados each year. Haas is the most popular and the most consumed type of avocado. Avocados mature on the tree but only become ripe when they fall off the vine, which makes them great for shipping because they don't become ripe until two weeks after falling off the tree. Avocado can be propagated from the seeds or by grafting tissue and cultures. Production of the fruit starts four to six years after planting. The avocado tree can survive over a hundred years under appropriate climate conditions. That's a long time. All that's pretty interesting, but I think the best part of avocados is guacamole. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below if you guys like guacamole, or maybe you have an avocado allergy. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is salsa. It happens to be a Spanish word used in the English language. It's a noun. It means a type of Latin American music incorporating elements of jazz and rock. A dance performed to salsa music. Or in regards to food, a spicy tomato sauce. Salsa. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is finale. It's a noun. It means the last part of a piece of music, a performance, or a public event, especially one particularly dramatic or exciting. Finale. Let's take a look at the art of the day. Today's work of art is the Flower Cellar. The Flower Cellar painting was painted in 1942 and is one of Diego Rivera's most famous paintings. He painted quite a few paintings of the Kayaf lilies throughout his life. This painting has a peasant girl with a blue scarf and barefoot holding a bundle of white Kaya lilies. The Kaya lilies is a central and quintessential example of Mexico's exuberant flora, was celebrated by Rivera many times. 
particularly in frescoes, depicting peasants with indigenous features, carrying bundles or offerings of them. In Rivera's The Flower Cellar, she kneels barefoot, her long dark braids falling down her back as she gathers a massive bundle of white lilies together. In The Flower Cellar, the pale heads of flowers and their thick cut stems fill the picture, dwarfing the flower cellar herself. Tiny lilies feature in several of Rivera's paintings given Diego Rivera's passionate political beliefs. The artist is making a political statement here about the importance of ordinary working person for the wealthy Mexican upper class. Hmm, that's an interesting take on things. What do you think of the painting The Flower Cellar? I think it's very pretty. What do you think? Go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that your fingernails grow at least two to four times faster than your toenails? It's true. Like most people, you probably cut your fingernails at least twice as often as you cut your toenails. You might even look at your toenails each time you cut your fingernails and think, yeah, they can wait. Let me assure you, you're not lazy. You're observant. It's actually true. Fingernails do grow faster than toenails. Although the reason or the purpose behind isn't clear or absolutely defined by medical science. But there are several reasons on why people think why toenails don't grow as fast. One theory is the sun. Now this one's a bit of a stretch I think. There's a school of thought that believes that human nails grow in response to sunlight. They agree with basic hypothesis which that fingernails grow faster than toenails, but the thinking is that since fingers are more often exposed to the light than toes are, the fingernails grow faster. As ridiculous as it sounds, I can't discount this one out of hand. I have to agree that my hands are more often out in the sun than my feet. Let me clarify by saying that I don't live near the equator, I also wear boots in the winter and sandals in the summer. But I also don't find that my toenails grow faster in the summertime than they do in the winter. So I don't know. The next reason is circulation. This theory sounds a bit more plausible than the sun one. The idea here is that the body's circulatory system is much more better pushing fresh oxygenated blood to the hands and the fingers than it is to the feet and the toes. That's true. Ask any diabetic person you know who's got problems with numb toes. And you learn, the heart favors the hands, therefore, the increased blood flow and oxygen levels cause fingernails to grow faster than the toenails. Another reason too is that toenails are thicker than fingernails, in which they take longer to produce. So yeah, fingernails grow faster than toenails. Pretty interesting, huh? Yes, cue the credits. This means we have reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. So farewell, Discovery Learners. Teacher Liz here is saying thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to attend the live Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Day Program's educational team. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program.